Hi, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to part 17 of our C Sharp for Automation testing video series. And in this video, I'll be talking about understanding and working with interfaces. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 16 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. All right, so let's get started. Interfaces. An interface contains only the signature or the declaration of methods or properties, but its actual implementation sits on the class where the interface is being implemented. So that's the very, very clear and concise definition of an interface. Since C-sharp does not support multiple inheritance via classes, you can use multiple interfaces to implement and get the same behavior. So I'm not really going to talk about interfaces in theoretically a lot because this course is completely focusing on automation testing and how we can get up to the speed with the C-sharp underlying concepts for our automation testing as much as possible. So no theory here. So interface in automation testing, just Selenium. So where are we really using it? So the best example of interface in automation testing with Selenium is the IE Web Driver interface. The first interface that you will ever encounter while writing your Selenium code is this. IE Web Driver, driver is equal to new Firefox driver, right? So that's what we initially do to open the Firefox browser. So drivers.open is gonna be opening the browser with the URL that you're gonna specify. So that's the iWeb driver here is actually an interface. And you can see that we have an iWeb driver. So the i in C sharp represent naming convention to represent an interface. So if it is just web driver, then it is class. And if it is an iWeb driver, then it's an interface. So you can also name the interface without an i as a prefix, but it is a way of naming convention in C-sharp that you specify i for an interface. But if you take Java, there is no such naming convention. It's going to be web driver. So why is the i web driver instead of the web driver class? That's the next question. Well, the answer is very, very simple. As you can see from the screenshot, we have mentioned only one Firefox browser, i web driver, driver is equal to new Firefox. But there are different browsers out there in market and Selenium web driver has to support all of them, something like Chrome driver, Internet Explorer driver and Safari drivers. So as you can see, while it turns out that there are different kinds of browsers available and Selenium has to support everything, interface come into picture. So again, it's going to be a little confusing here. So why is that interface really going to be helpful? Whereas a class can also do that? Well, of course not. Because interface is something where there won't be any implementation that we saw in our first slide. An interface contains only the signature or the declaration of a method or properties, but its actual implementation sits on the class where the interface is being implemented. So that's what it is. So basically your actual implementation is not going to be sitting in the interface, but it's going to sit on the class where it is going to be implemented. The interface is going to be implemented something like Firefox driver, or Chrome driver, or Internet Explorer driver, or Safari driver. And since these classes are implementing the interface, it's of type interface, right? And that's the reason it is still compatible. So what does this really mean to interface then? It's very, very simple. All the browser developers must have to comply with the iWebDriver method names by implementing the iWebDriver interface in its class, something like this. As you can see here, our namespace, the open QA at selenium.firefox is going to be implementing the remote web driver. Similarly, the Chrome driver is also going to implement the remote web driver class. And these remote web driver classes are internally going to implement the iWebDriver interface. So we are going to quickly see this in action by creating a pretty much exactly the mock way of how Selenium is actually being implemented internally and you'll understand how the interface is really, really helpful even in automation testing. So for that, I'm going to quickly flip to Visual Studio. All right, so this is the same project which we have been working so long in our 16 videos of this course so far, but I have made a few changes this time. 
what I did is I have actually migrated our project to Visual Studio 2017. So right now what I'm using is a Visual Studio 2017 edition. And this 2017 edition has some cool features where it compared to 2016, which is visual at least, because we are not really exploring a lot in Visual Studio for now. But as you can see, there is some lines in here, a little more clarity uh, while compared to 2015 version of Visual Studio. So other than that, it's pretty much the same thing, at least what discussions we are doing. All right, so we're coming back to our interface topic. I'm gonna create two folders here. Let's mimic something like this. I'm gonna be a developer of Selenium. So I'm gonna create a Selenium folder here and I'm also going to support different kinds of browser codes. So let's call this as browsers. And I'm going to have different kinds of browsers, something like a Chrome. And I'm going to have browsers like Firefox. And as a Selenium developer, I'm actually going to write something like a web driver. So first time I'm going to write as a class. Supposing that I have all the methods sitting inside the class and you will understand why we are actually going for interface instead of a class in a few minutes. So let's say I have some methods, something like this, something like find element and click and send keys and open all those methods sitting actually inside this web driver class. Well, these methods will be fine for the Selenium guy because Selenium has their own method like find element, click and send keys and it will work fine for Selenium, at least just for the Selenium. Let's say the find element mechanism is different for Chrome. Of course it is different. Similarly, the find element mechanism for Firefox is different and for IE it is different. So all these browser developers are going to have their own method implementation of finding the element and clicking an element and sending a text to a particular element. So how they are going to basically do they are going to basically do exactly the same thing, but their own mechanism sitting within inside these browser implementation. So for that, if they try to implement all the methods from the web driver, something like this, and if they try to inherit from web driver, and if they write a, their own method implementation over here, something like this. And you can see there will be a scrolly line saying that chrome.find element hides the inherited members of the webdriver.find element. Use a new keyword if the hiding was intended. So which is pretty much meaningful because if you are going to call a method using this particular chrome, then it is going to be hiding the parent implementation of the webdriver. Rather it's going to use this particular find element, which is what we actually require. But this is not the right way that an API of any particular application is being exposed to an outside software. So instead of doing it as a class being implemented something like this, well, of course, this is, this is still legal. If you go to the program.cs and if you try to call the web driver class, web driver driver is equal to new Chrome, and if you try to add the references for them, you can see that it still supports. And if you just use driver dot find element, and now if I try to run this particular application, you can see that the find the UI element comes in here. And this particular find element is basically this particular find element, which is coming, which is not the one which is available in here, and that's the one which is being said. Chrome.find element hides the inherited member, web.find element, use the new keyword if the hiding is intended. So the Chrome to be coming in here, then probably you need to make something like a Chrome, and then you need to typecast this driver, something like this. And now if you run it, you will see that the find the UI element in Chrome will appear something like here. Right. So this is how you can actually do, but this is not the right way of implementation. And that's the reason the actual interface comes into picture. So let's say if all these manufacturers of the browsers are going to come up with their own implementation, 
then the best way for a selenium guys to do is to just leave all the mechanism to them and they can just take care of how to handle those particular browsers so for that reason you need to have what is called as a interface so this interface now come into handy and it is actually an interface so interface is the keyword for an interface and here you can just give what are the signatures of the particular method so basically you don't have to specify the public there just do find element or find elements I don't know what is that it's find element click and send keys so find element wide send keys similarly wide click you can save it and now for all these browsers you can just implement from iWebDriver instead of WebDriver and once I do this implement the interface and now you can see that the screw line is gone and the find element is all fine right now and similarly let's do this I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna go to the Firefox here and let's say I'm not going to implement that just implement the iWebDriver you get a screw line here and it says the Firefox does not implement the member find element send keys and click so if I just do control dot and implement interface you can see it automatically brings all the methods to be implemented so it's like a contract that any browser manufacturer or a developer who is going to use this iWebDriver he must have to implement these particular methods so I'm just going to do exactly the same thing but this time it is going to be for the Firefox in Firefox now save it right all right that's good and this is not going to be the string keys I think that's how it should be for this as well everything is good right now and now we don't really require this webdriver.cs file so I'm just going to delete the complete implementation here so all the implementation is going to sit in these guys the Chrome and Firefox but not in the iWebDriver it's just the signature but the implementation is going to be sitting in here right so now if I go to the program.cs file you can see that instead of iWebDriver instead of WebDriver I can change this to iWebDriver and this is still legal you can see that Chrome is still compatible with this and I don't really have to do this particular piece of line and now if I just do a find element for the Chrome and if I run this oops uh, it. I don't know all right so let's build it you can see that it is automatically bringing me the Chrome so I don't really have to do any typecasting here as I did before so based on the kind of browser I'm implementing this are actually going to bring in things for you so if I change this to Firefox it is going to show that find the UI element in Firefox so based on the kind of browser or kind of implementation or class I'm going to be calling in here it is going to be changing or calling the methods for that particular class and that's what it is so this is how the interface is so much handy so in many ways this is how the interface is being used within selenium so you can see how good the contract is being made and how you can call the particular interface within here as easily as possible without doing any typecasting as we did before right so this is the purpose of interface in c sharp so once again guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day